thought I'd make a quick video looking at uh, this particular integration which is integral of x to the power i uh, with respect to x um, and it has, I don't know if you call it an unexpected result or an expected result, we're, we're going to try and prove and show like what it actually integrates to. Um, I mean, first off, you, you might, if you think about this at all, think that, that one possibility would be that it follows the same rule as for, for normal power. So, for example, x to the i, well, we just increase the power by 1 and divide by the new power. So, my, my guess might be, well, it's going to be x to the i plus 1 divided by i plus 1 plus c. And for, for the remainder of this, I'll kind of ignore the plus c, uh, but we'll stick it back in at the end. So, I mean, you might think that's kind of obvious, or you might think, I don't know, why should that kind of extend to complex numbers? Uh, let's let's see what happens. Um, first off, let's just see what an equivalent form of this is. We don't normally like to have i on the bottom of a fraction, so we can rationalize the denominator. So here we go, I've, I've times the top and the bottom by uh, minus i plus 1. The reason I've done that is that when I do i times minus i, and then everything else cancels, and 1 plus 1, I end up with 2 on the bottom. And then on the top, I end up with a 1 minus i lot of x to the i plus 1. So these things are equivalent. Um, okay, so let's see if we can try and actually work out uh, what this integrates to. First off, well, there we go. This is what I'm starting with, x to the power i. Um, here's a little trick. I'm going to basically say that that is exactly the same as e to the ln x to the i. So if you know about inverse functions, e, x, and ln x are inverse. So e to the ln x, they're inverse functions. Um, so basically, when they cancel out, yeah, it's the same thing. So x to the i is exactly the same as e to the ln x to the i. I can then use the laws of um, logs. I can bring the power of i down. So I get e to the i ln x. So they're all the same thing. I've just written it in a different format. The reason I've written it in this format is because I can now use this uh, formula here, or this identity, um, e to the i theta is equal to cos theta plus i sine theta. So this is one of the kind of fundamental identities that we use for complex numbers. Uh, and you might be able to notice here that if I've written it as e to the i ln x, or in this case here, theta is ln x. So therefore, if e to the i theta is, is cos theta plus i sine theta, e to the i ln x must be cos ln x plus i sine ln x. So, okay, so I'm changing the form again. So I'm now integrating what e to the i ln x. So I'm actually now integrating this thing here, cos ln x plus i sine ln x. So there we go. That's what I'm now trying to integrate. Uh, I can now split the integral. So I can say, well, I'm actually going to integrate cos ln x dx. And I can also take the i outside and then i times by the integral of sine ln x dx. Okay, so that's what I'm now trying to do. Uh, I now know to try and integrate both of those two bits separately. Uh, the, the rules are going to be very similar for both of them. So here we go. The first thing is I say that I make the substitution for u equals ln x. Therefore, du by dx is 1 over x. If I rearrange du over dx is 1 over x, I can get x du equals dx. I'm going to make that substitution in a minute. And also later on, if I've defined u equals ln x, that is the same as e to the power u is equal to x. So all those things are going to be useful later. So I'm now going to make my substitution. Cos ln x dx. Well, I've just said ln x is u, uh, and I've still got my x. I need to get rid of this x. Um, and obviously, the dx has become the du. Uh, how do you get rid of x? Well, there we go. x is equal to e to the u. So I get the integral of e to the u cos u du. Um, this might look quite familiar for those of you who've done some calculus before. Uh, we're not actually going to do it. It's, it's integration by parts twice. So uh, if you really fancy doing it, you can kind of look up how to do this. But you know, e to the u cos u du, integration by parts twice uh, will eventually give us this one a half. e to the u cos u plus sine u. Um, and then my last step is to say, well, actually, remember what u was. u was equal to ln x. So I stick in the u equals ln x, the u equals ln x, and then e to the u, remember that was x, so I get this. So therefore the integral of cos ln x dx is x over 2 cos ln x plus sine ln x. I get, um, basically exactly the same idea for sine ln x, it follows the same rule. u equals ln x, there's du by dx, 
there's my rearranged formula for dx, there's eu equals x again, same idea, substitution for u, e to the u sine u du, again, this is a very familiar integral by parts twice, uh, which if you do, you get a half e to the u minus cos u plus sine u, so notice it's slightly different this time, uh, and then again make the substitution, so e to the u is x, so replace e to the u with x, replace u with ln x. Okay, so I'm finally getting somewhere. Um, so I've now got this thing here. So I now know that the integral of cos ln x dx plus i integral of sine ln x is equal to, well, this is the answer I got for cos. And then the only thing I've done differently is I've got an i times by the integral for the sine ln x. So I get to this stage here. Okay, now this is the, the kind of trick that I'm looking at here is that I would quite like to have a cos and an i sine. So I've got cos ln x and an i sine because I want to, maybe transform this into something else in a minute. Um, so what I've done is I've basically gone, well, I'll take the x over 2 cos ln x here. I'll keep that as it is. I'll take, this is x i over 2 sine ln x. I'll put this over on this side. So I've got a cos ln x and a plus i sine ln x. So I've basically taken this, this part and then put it like over here, basically, when, when I've expanded out this bit here. And then the other bit that's left, well, I've got an x i over 2 times i cos ln x. So this is, is this part here. So I'm going to kind of end up with this bit over here. And then the other, the sine ln x, I'm going to kind of borrow this bit from here. And it's going to be this bit. Um, hopefully this will become clear in a minute as to why I'm doing this. But I'm, I'm just rearranging stuff. I've not changed anything. I'm just rearranging how I've written the, the, the expression here. Okay. Once I've got this, well, I'll keep this as it is. I've got uh, this bit I'll, I'll keep. I'll rewrite x over 2 minus i cos ln x plus sine ln x. I'll rewrite it like this. Let's just check that's the same thing. Minus i x over 2 times cos. Yep, I'm going to get the, the minus i as, as I wanted to here. And then minus i times i. Okay, i times i is minus 1. Minus i times i is positive. And again, yeah, so I'm going to get this thing here. So again, this bracket and this bracket here, they're the same thing. Okay, now, the, the reason I've done all that is because I can now have a very nice kind of uh, simplification. Cos ln x plus i sine ln x. If you remember right from the start, so this whole thing here is just equal to x to the i. Well, let's just check. Where do we define all this? There we go. x to the i is equal to cos ln x plus i sine ln x. So I've now made that substitution. So I can say, look, all of this, all of this thing here is x to the i. And actually, all this thing here is also x to the i. So I've now got all of this thing is equal to x over 2 x to the i plus minus i x over 2 x to the i. OK, now I use the, the laws of powers. x times x to the i. Well, I'm, I'm increasing the power by 1. So x to the i plus 1 times by a half. And same again for this one, x times x to the i is x to the i plus 1. And again, I've got minus 1 over uh, minus one i over 2. Okay, I can now factorize that. I mean, that's the same as 1 minus i over 2 times x to the i plus 1. And I get to this stage, and I go, well, hang on a minute. What did I define right at the start? It's the same thing. So basically, I've, I've just said that if the power rule is 2, so if the integral of x to the i is equal to this thing, remember this thing is the same as this thing, then the power rule is, is holding. So I've, I've just basically proved that the integral of x to the i is indeed x to the i plus 1 divided by i plus 1 plus c. So it works. So even though we're dealing with complex numbers, uh, the power rule still holds. And there we go.